Hey friends, this is Terry Squires with today's Nashville This is Faith. I sat down with Linda Davis and she shared with me when she went on tour with Reba McIntyre and Kenny Rogers and she has a daughter that is very famous and you won't want to miss her episode. In a world that seems to be falling apart, love remains. Love's name is Jesus. Grammy Award winning country music artist Linda Davis began to catch the attention of the country music world due to her unique ability to interpret a song, one being superstar Reba McIntyre. Together, they recorded their duet, Does He Love You, went on to become a number one hit, earning both artists several awards, including a Grammy. Today, she is winning Grammy Awards with her husband, Lang Scott, and daughters, Hillary of Lady A and Riley. Releasing their two-time Grammy winning album, Hillary Scott and the Scott Family, Love Remains. This is her story. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Linda, what a pleasure and honor to sit down with you. I was so excited when I heard that you were going to be on Today's Nashville. Well, I'm thrilled and our mutual friend Barbara Fairchild had wonderful things to say about you and your heart, and oh, I was anxious to uh, I just meet you love, myself. I just love her so much. and I do too. And what a beautiful person. Yes, she but is. I want to hear all about you. I mean, I have followed you for a long time, but I want to know where it all started. Well, I don't know if you read the bio part about I'm from Texas, but I'm very proud of that fact. I moved to Nashville when I was 19, chasing my dream to be on the Grand Ole Opry. That was the goal. And it didn't happen right away. It's, I tell the story that I thought they were just going to throw the doors wide open and invite me on stage. But it took a little while. I needed to figure things out and pay some more dues. But that was what drew me here. And then I met my husband just shortly after I moved to town. And that's really what God got me here for, Lame. to meet my husband, yes. And then our love story, we're almost 40 years married. So that in itself is another episode. Well, just tell me about him a little bit. Oh, a little bit. Is well, he in the music business he too? He is. Lang is from South Carolina. He moved to Nashville the same year I did, just a few months before. We had some mutual friends, and that's how we met. But he's very talented, singer, songwriter, musician. And actually, um, we both toured together with Reba. We, we still make music together. And so that's what drew us together. That's how we got to know each other. But the rest is, is all God's plan for us to, to have met and, you know, created two children out of the deal. So, oh yeah, we're going to talk about that in a little bit yeah. too, but. And the grandchildren. And the grandchildren. Okay. I mean, you have <laughs> such a history. So you were 19 when you came yeah. here. Did you have musical background when you came or was you mostly just, you just wanted to sing? And I mean, that was your passion growing up as a teen? always and before. So as a little girl, I was the baby of three kids and we went to this little missionary Baptist church in the country in East Texas. And it was family mostly at the church, but friends who were like family. And I was one of, you know, a handful of kids that loved to sing and sing loud. And I was brave. I, I was fearless. And so learning to sing, you know, my little gospel songs and uh, encouraged to sing them. So that just kind of lit my fire. And then, of course, the country music was in the house and, you know, Hee Haw and the Grand Ole Opry on our little TV, one of the three channels that we had, and the radio. And so it music was just always in me, not because there was any training 
There was no formal training, but it was just the love of it. Everybody around me encouraged me. No one really knew what to help me out with. So you just traveled it to out. Nashville and 19, were you by yourself? Well, mom and daddy brought me with pulling a U-Haul and helped me bring a few things to set up housekeeping. A few pots and pans mama let me use from her kitchen and very, very basic things. But I didn't, I didn't care. I didn't need anything. I just needed to be here. And I'm so thankful. What were those that, few years like when uh, you first came? Lean. <laughs> Figuring out how to make this money stretch out to, to pay for everything and then figure out how to manage that, you know, because, and, and I was so green in every aspect because I trusted people and the good Lord was so good to me to not s allow me to find myself in situations to where I couldn't get out of them, you know. I was, you hear a lot of stories or read some, I was not that person. I, he just protected me from myself and from anybody else that had, you know, anything negative or uh, harmful. He now, took care of me. were you a believer at that time? Were oh, you yes. do faith? Oh, Tell yes. me about that. Always. I mean, from the time I was a little girl, I was saved and baptized in that same little church that I was describing earlier. You know how we all kind of get on and off the path and and start kind of forging our own way and, and not really praying about it or getting the Lord's opinion about things. We just kind of make, uh, blaze our own trail. And, and in spite of that, He still protected me and kept me covered and allowed me to attain the goals that I had and more. Oh my goodness. It would take days to describe all of the beautiful things that He has lined out for me better than I had my own plans because I was just clueless. So there has just been some, some beautiful dreams that have come true. And, um, can you share any oh, of those? Well, the, I got to be on the Grand Ole Opry, not just, but a few years after I moved here and have been on it since every time it's like that little girl in East Texas. It's like my dreams come true again. It's like the first time every time. So, and then of course my daughter fast forward a few years and she and her Partners, Dave and Charles, are invited to be members of the Opry. So, if it, you know, it's a mama's uh, happy place what is a, when what your a kids blessing. are happy. What a, an amazing, blessed family that you have. Take me back to that time when you first stepped on the Grand Old Opry. What mm. was it like? Uh, Mr. Hank Snow introduced me. Backstage, Mr. Roy Acuff, I mean, Jeannie Seeley, all of my heroes, some of my childhood heroes, and still heroes. Well, I just felt like I had arrived. And, and How old were you? It, oh, at that point, I was probably about 21, about 21, 22. So getting here at 19, so it took me a few years. A lot of the artists now, they probably have the same idea. You know, they show up and, and they're fixing to step on stage, just like I had that idea. And some of them do get opportunities quicker than maybe it happened for me. But it it was just such a thrill and such a, um, I guess, surreal would be a good word because I dreamed about it and it was better than I dreamed about. And most of my life has been better than what I dreamed it would be. Do you remember the song that you sang? It was probably one of the singles I had out at the time, but honestly, that doesn't stick out in my mind. Were as you much writing as your own moment. music then? Not always. Not always. Uh, in the 90s, when my career uh, was was really at its peak, some of the artists didn't write. Reba didn't write all her songs. George Strait didn't write all his songs. Naomi and Winona didn't write theirs. I mean, well, Naomi wrote several of theirs, but uh, that wasn't such the the combination as it is now. But I'm proud for my daughter that their generation of artists do write most of their songs because it's just it's just better to to own your your songs to have you know and have a have a participation in what you sing night after night you know what from the grand old opry stage to stages around the world it's amazing what you've gone through and where god has taken you and we're going to talk about that when we come back
Linda, the Lord has taken you from the Grand Old Opry to stages around the world. What was it like? I'm just going to pick one mm -hmm. for now. What was it like to tour with Reba? Well, Reba is what you see is what you get. She is just this down-to-earth woman with uh, personality plus. She has a work ethic like she can work five men under the table because she's just she just was taught to just get out there and do it. And she's I, I don't I don't know where she gets her energy. I mean, like right now she's doing her the voice and and she's got her own television show. It seems that's going to come anyway. She's always been just three or four projects going at once, but yet she gets out on that stage and she is she's such the uh, entertainer just and everybody loves her. And I understand why, because I've been right up under her for several years. How many and years did you tour with We worked, Lang and I both were on tour oh, okay. with Reba, just in case you didn't know that part, which makes for a husband and wife, uh, it's like a, it was like a, a vacation somewhat because we loved what we get to do and we were all over the place, all over the world. The hard part about touring for any parent, but especially when a mom and daddy's on the same tour, and we don't take our children because it's not our tour. So Hillary at the time, she was a little girl and, and my mother and father-in-law looked after her while we toured. That was the hard part. But any parent that works, you can't, you know, you can't take your kid to work every day. So that's a And challenge. Hillary, let's talk about Hillary. And then um, you have another daughter, yes, right? Yes. And let's talk about them just for a second since we brought them up. Hillary Scott. Yeah. Lady A. Yeah. And uh, that must be something too. With your Grammys, with... Well, it's been, I've enjoyed my career and Lang has enjoyed his and ours. But when our child decided against our suggestion, actually, to get in the music business, we were worried for her heart to be broken because it's a tough business. It is a and a lot of people don't realize that, do they? And, I, and being on the road so much. And, and the sacrifices, but you know, having success like Hillary, Dave and Charles have had, it's been just a rocket ride. And Lang and I are so proud and so tickled that she's enjoying her goals and her dreams. But we also know that there's a lot that you trade off and that's gone a lot, that's tired, that's just trying to, you're missing stuff that you really, it, any parent that works, and if, especially those who travel, you aren't always there for the, the your kids' games or their recitals. or And that's what you went through with? Yes, with her. Or when they're sick, somebody else is tending to your kid, and you just feel about How this How many big. days on the in the year were you gone? Oh, well, if you count, you know, if you have a three-day weekend, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night are shows, or else Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. For the band, you leave a day or so early to get there. And if it's a long way, if it's across country or up in Canada or whatever, you have to allow for the travel. And then you get there, do your shows, because they usually time it out to where there's three, 400 miles between each gig. So you sleep on the bus, you wake up and you're in a new town. And then the last show, then you drive home and get off the bus. So that's three days to work, but two days bookends to get there and get back home. So that's that's a lot of days out of the week. So you add that up and that sometimes it's 100, 150 dates. Were there at any gone. times in your life that you thought, I can't, I just can't do this? Or... I, I, there's times that it's like, you're ready for a break and we need to be home. We're missing too much. I feel out of touch with my home and my tribe. Just your tribe, your life, your... There's just a lot that feels like it's out of control, but that's about the time we had a few days off. It, uh, and Reba, when we worked with, together, that's, she, she had the same you know, issues as anybody, even though she's the headliner, she missed out too on home things. So then when Hillary and, and the guys have their career, same thing, you know, when you're the, the headliner, you do dictate the schedule. Uh, but there's a, there's a grace that we all try to give ourselves and hope that our families give us when we're gone. And, and you just make good on the time when you are home and you make it quality. Now you won your first Grammy. 
with Reba. With Reba. Mm-hmm. And does he love you? Mm -hmm. Will you sing a little bit? Oh, this is so funny. Our, our little story about the Grammy, I'll tell you about that. But those that are watching, maybe they remember it. And obviously, uh, it's a duet, but I'll just do my part. Is that okay? That's does okay. he love you like he loves me? Does he think of you when he's holding me? And does he whisper all his fantasies? Does he love you like he's been loving me? So that was our little... Um, I love that song. Our little cat fight song. That, and it was. I mean, the video. Mama was a little disturbed. <laughs> she had a little issue with the boat blowing up. But when she realized, okay, Linda Kay's okay, it's just acting. Well, they showed a scene at the end where it's like you all yeah. came with the cameras just to... Calm everybody yes. down that nobody really got blown up. They didn't know Reba had such a dark side. <laughs> but, With her scar. Oh, her yes. Nose. But, I mean, hello, I was not a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> but that was fun. We went around the world. That song opened up so many doors and opportunities for me. She and I had so much fun on stage making the video. Uh, and it's just, you never know how a blessing and and something that God's going to drop into both of our lives. Because Reba wasn't, I mean, she had a great career before the duet. She's had a great career since. I had a little bit going on before, not near as much. And then great things have come my way since. But that is just one of those measurements of time. 30 years, by the way, since that song. Oh, you're just 30 How about years. That? And it's fine. still, you know. It's one of those that just... Just hanging around. Yes, it does. It does. And my friend Kenny Rogers has a duet, Islands in the Stream, with Dolly. Same kind of thing. Those songs, because there's often times like, oh, what's your favorite duet? They do these little surveys or whatever. And both of those land well, in. But they're just time. I mean, they're just legend it's songs. So you know? fun. It it's is. fun to be a part of I, something like I that. I just love that song. I love, and I love Kenny Rogers. So do I. And you have spent a lot of time with him also. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about him when we come back. Okay. Linda, let's talk about Kenny Rogers. He was one of my favorite growing up, too. I just love him. What was it like to spend time with him and touring with him? He was one of the most generous and giving human beings that I've ever known. And when it came to his music and his production and his band, his crew, same, giving, anything I needed. But he was that way with everybody. You, you have... Um, time you're, you're spending with T. Graham Brown. He ha he'll have the same thing to say. I don't know who else you've interviewed that were friends with Kenny Rogers, but it's the same story because he, I remember he told me, he said, there was an, an act that was headlining and, and Kenny was opening early on in his success. And he said that he was really happy to be there and he knew it was going to do his career some good, but they were just not very um, generous with their stuff. Because whenever you're opening, the headliner has their band and their instruments and everything set. And when you're opening, you put your stuff ahead of theirs so then it can be struck and cleaned out of the way so then the, the main artist gets the clean stage. Well, evidently, this artist was not very generous with the stage. I mean, they only had a little bit of space to do their show. And then there's lights and there's smoke and all that stuff that they used. They didn't yet let him have any of that. It was just the real basics. You know, here's you a piece of the stage and that's all you get. And he said, I never forgot that because it felt so wrong. And he, ever since he had that experience with his guest, Anything, he, he said, anything I got, you can use. Because that what, so de denying the opening act, all of the, the fun things that you have anyway, it's just hurting you because the better the opening act looks and sounds, the smarter that makes you look to your audience. And he was just very aware of just treat each other good because there's enough to go around. And, and again, it just makes me look smart that I got you to open the shows because 
whatever I have, you can use. So that just is a small example of what a good guy he was. I just love that. I mean, because we live in a world that's so competitive. Mm -hmm. And your industry is very competitive. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But the ones who behave that way are so insecure and they can't be enjoying in their in their selves. Mm -hmm. They have to be unhappy or unfulfilled. It's the way I chalk it up. But I would stand at side stage. When I first started working with Kenny, I was opening for him and his band played for me and uh, we're uh, they're like my brothers. And still, because he had the same band for 40 something years and that, that speaks volumes. If somebody has their crew and everyone around them for that long, that means that that's a good guy, loyal. So I would open, and as our time together through the years, you know, progressed, in the last few years of his farewell tour, he wanted me to be a part of his show. So I would come on and off the stage whenever it was time, and I'd sing with him, I'd sing a solo by myself, and he'd sit there and I'd just twirl around him or whatever. We had a lot of fun. He was just he was like a family member to me. And we lost him. It was during the COVID time. I remember. It I wasn't COVID that took his life, but it was during that time that there was no chance to, you know, see each other or, or talk or... It was heartbreaking. Yeah. My husband and I saw him in concert just shortly before that. Mm -hmm. There was a big show, a big tribute uh, to Kenny Rogers here in Nashville mm -hmm. at Bridgestone, it was full. It was up to the rafters people. And he and his wife, Wanda, were there to enjoy that. And he was in fine health then. Uh, and I mean, there were so many artists that came from all over the place, Lionel Richie and Dolly and his, some of his great friends. And uh, Hillary and I got to sing for him. Oh, it's beautiful. Family is so important to you. We were talking about that earlier. Can you share a little bit? Yes, it's everything. It's everything. And our little family, I didn't mean to cry on you oh, today. No, it's, okay. it's all, it's happy tears. I promise it's happy tears. Um, all we know is music and, and that's in happy times, in hard times. It just heals. I don't know what your family does. We love music. But music. And when Jesus is a part of it, it's... And you won your second, your, your what, two other Grammys? There were two that came from this family record that was... I will. Yes, that was Hillary's single that she released from our record called Love Remains. And... Uh, yeah, Love Remains. Yeah, Love Remains. I hope I need to get you a copy of that because there's like 53 minutes of songs that will just... I have some on my... Do you? Yes, it, I've downloaded some. I hope it lifts your spirits. Oh, and it's beautiful. gives you, you know, just reminds you that, that the Lord is for you. Was there ever a time, though, that you thought, oh, I just need to stop? Ah, uh, I can't remember that day. That's good. I can't remember that day. I've always felt like... You know, maybe it was like, oh, why didn't that happen? I thought I was about to step into something amazing, and it's like the door shut. So I would wonder about that from time to time. It's like, but pretty quickly, after I dusted myself off, it's like, this is just not meant to be for me. And I am enjoying my life. I have a good balance in my life because my family, we're all good. We're healthy. We're, you know, just tight. And... This door closed, but there's something else. And so it was very, very little time did I take to waller in it. Well, where is God taking you and your family now? You know, if, if I thought too much about it, I might get weighted down with, you know, worrying and or, or curious. But I just kind of get up and live my day and just let the Lord show me where he's going to take me. I, I I think doing more of what we've been doing. Do you have any new music coming out? We're writing different stuff and we're we're uh, playing all over the place and and being inspired and as far as to create something in the studio that that is we kind of got a little project. We see a project, hopefully we can get that accomplished in the next few months and I'll get back with you when I have something finished. But we just, you know, sometimes you make plans and, and God 
is all about it and he's directing and and sometimes we just rest and we wait for him to give us a nudge and and even though we're in perpetual motion working because we've been so blessed with with concerts and and jobs uh, my husband and I travel together and we just love to get out and perform in front of people and the music that we were talking about from our family record love remains that's a big part of our repertoire but songs i've recorded and written in my you know country music career fills a fills the night and then we tell a bunch of stories in between our songs because i guess um 40 plus years in nashville of a career and uh, there's a lot to tell, a lot to talk about. I can't wait to catch up with you later on to see what God has done. Linda, thank you so much for being with me today. What a blessing and honor you are. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me. And, and we will I, be following you. I hope so. Maybe you can come to one of our shows. Well, yes, definitely. We'll find a date. Okay, we will. My friend, has God given you a dream? Take his hand, let him lead the way, trust him. This is today's Nashville, this is Faith. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.